right. Uh, I just want to echo what Ryan says. I have the honor and privilege of getting to work some of their matches down there. And it's an awesome program. It's an awesome facility. Bring your kids down. All right. Show them what volleyball is all about. And uh, you know, have some fun. Uh, Nancy and I get to uh, to talk about what's coming up uh, as far as our outlook on things. So uh, we've got some points of emphasis from this past season, things that we've seen that we'd like your help with. Uh, major rule changes. We always have rule changes, right? So we'll talk about those. A couple of updates from the scoring side, from the referee side. Uh, just a touch on in-house officials, uh, otherwise known as club referees, uh, training curricula, and you know we'll open it up to questions. So, uh, just a reminder that we're back to the full net. Okay, contact with the net between the antennas while in the act of playing the ball, not just the top tape. The full net is a fault. So. It's back to similar to the college game, certainly not as restrictive as the high school game, but just reiterate that. Okay, um, so yeah, I kind of gave you the Reader's Digest version. We'll, if you have questions, be happy to talk to you about it. But, um, again, score sheet, new score sheet last season. Um, we had, we removed the area for uh, coaches to sign. Isn't that great? You like that? All right. Uh, the biggest thing that I have seen issues with from a referee standpoint, oops, sorry about that, fat figure, uh, is the captain's area, which was completely new last year, and less than 50% of the clubs are getting it right. So that will be a point of emphasis this year, especially in the training. Uh, of the club players and coaches. So it's in the rule book. This is a direct lift from the rule book, what to do. We've got a box that's the roster captain, which we don't use, okay? We've got the circle, which is the uh, captain from the lineup sheet. And then as the captains change, if you sub them out, or the Libro can be captain this year, or last year, uh, you know, there's a good example in the rule book. So again, just do that. Nancy, you had something to add? Yeah, and one point of emphasis that needs to be noted in this example, um, you notice that the captain here is number eight and it's the libero. Now the problem is the captain needs to be on the floor at all times. So what we're suggesting, and, and USA Volleyball is still trying to figure it out because they no longer track the captain on the libero sheet. So you can't necessarily know when that, when that player is in and when that player is out. Proactively, we're asking our scorers to ask the coaches, if they notice that, to uh, respectfully indicate who would be the alternate. So usually that person would all already be identified and you would know that there's a captain on the court versus trying to figure that out at some point in time, either with the assistant coach or the head coach. So note to self if you can do that when you're putting your rosters or your lineups in, that would be very, very helpful. And the referees, yeah, this will be a point of emphasis to the referees as well to look for this. So uh, we'll help you through it. All right. Do you guys or anybody in the room know if WIAA is allowing the same thing, put an A next to alternate? Uh, Larry, do you know? It's not at all in the literature. Okay. And they haven't even designated it specifically in USA's book either, so they haven't figured any of that out yet. We're kind of doing a makeshift. <laughs> well, that's, that's the other thing. Remember, the rule book is the same rule book as we used last year, so hopefully you didn't throw it out. Um, it's an Olympic year, and how about Patty Rolfe? Uh, cool. Um, you have more rule books out in the lobby if anybody does need them. We'll yep. give you an entire box. <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, you know, being an Olympic year, the rule changes will probably start filtering down a year or two out. So, um, and again, yeah, just how to uh, switch the captain on the score sheet. Okay. Uh, this is actually not a new rule. It was an emergency rule passed mid-season last year. Remember the solid color jersey rule? Wasn't my fault. 
tell you, the referees hated it as much as you guys did. Uh, but thank you, Patty Rolf. She was instrumental in getting it, quote, rescinded. So the basic rule is the libero must wear a uniform, which clearly contrasts with the rest of the team. Doesn't have to be solid color, but it must clearly contrast. And who makes the judgment on that? We do. Okay. Uh, one of my associates, national referee, is colorblind. Red and green is a problem for him. All right. So as long as they clearly contrast, think light and dark colors. Okay, white and black works. Okay, um, so when you're ordering uniforms for this coming season, you don't have to get into the solid color issue, but they've got a contrast. You know, and think about where we're looking from up on the referee stand, looking down, we're looking more at shoulders than anything else. The score table has to be able to also identify the Libro going in and out. So. Um, you know, make it easy on the scorers. What was uh, the results of the survey? You know, the, the score, junior scorers are having issues. Okay, help them out. Okay, help your kids out. Jim. Jim Momsen has also done a very good job of accepting emails. If you take a picture of yep. your your libero, your solid color jerseys, put them next to each other. Jim, yeah, we'll get you, back to you with a. If you've a, got a question, you know, take an image or. Whatever, send it to me. I'll give you my judgment on it. Can I ask though that you not take a picture of a player in the jersey? Yes. And that's not really a joke. It's actually happened. Um, and a parent complained because somebody was taking a picture of their daughter and sending it off. So please take the jersey off the players before you send the picture. Yeah, put them side by side on the table or on, you know, hang them on two chairs and send it. Okay. All right, that was the 2016 rule change. All right, four, look at this. Advanced notice, folks, 2018-2019 season. Yeah. Forewarned, Ryan, this is also for you, okay. NCAA, 2018-2019. All right, I, these are my underlines and bolds beginning with that season, the jersey number, the number itself, must be of a color that is clearly in distinct contrast with the color of the jersey. We don't worry about the border anymore. Okay, there are one Division three school in particular had a maroon jersey, maroon let, you know, numbers with white piping. They were great at the start of the season. After about four cycles through the washer, the white started, or the, the maroon started bleeding into the white. And I was at a school with this team where the scorers could not see the number. The lighting wasn't real good in the gym, but we, we had a problem. We could not read the numbers on half the players. So it's coming. You know, yellow number on a white jersey doesn't work even with piping. So you'll see more as this comes down the line. Uh, score updates. You're up. There are none. <laughs> so that's a good thing. <laughs> We've gotten through it, the, the uh, subtle changes. I know everybody loves the T-bar. I know everybody loves not having to sign the score sheets. Um, we're going to only get better at it. Uh, the cadre for um, the number of individuals that are now professionally score um, uh, score certified within the region has increased. Uh, we're probably close to 50 at this point. So most of the officials that you're going to be interacting with, either on the tower or as our twos, will have that certification. We'll be able to help at the desk and teach. Um, and the mentoring program, um, with the help of Larry and, and being able to assign uh, monitors to almost all of the events, 
um, have been at least the Badger Region ones, and now we're starting to get some of the tournament directors to hire them as well. And we're also getting some um, the opportunities to actually have them work as professionally um, professional scores in tandem with a full um, officiating staff at some of our events. Uh, typically, the championships and the qualifiers at the gold level. So um, if you have any questions, I, especially tournament directors as well, uh, requesting a monitor for yours, please let Larry and I know and we'll, we'll help you out. And that is at the region's cost, not yours. Okay, and then training, uh, Nancy and I just put our heads together. Very similar to last year uh, as far as you know, getting your players and coaches trained. You have options. You can hire somebody, you know, from the region, uh, a certified referee slash scorer, to come out and do the clinic for you. Okay, you can do it yourself with the list of modules that are available through USA Volleyball, or you can have your your players and coaches register uh, for the curriculum and do it themselves, you know, at their own leisure. So uh, we've got the curriculum, we're putting it together, it should be out there certainly in enough time to, to start the season, but we have to get back to USA Volleyball and get all those. There'll be separate, separate curricula for coaches, for juniors, for referees, you know, we're going down the line. So it's customized to whatever role you play uh, in volleyball. Um, just an update, we had about 140 uh, certified referees last year uh, on our roster. We hope to have more. Um, we're always looking for kids, parents that, that want to participate. Okay, we've, uh, with Larry's help, transitioned a number of high school referees into the USA ranks and also into the college ranks. So it's good for everybody. Um, yeah, so if you've got a, a player that, you know, maybe, maybe they're in that burnout mode that we talked about earlier. Uh, they don't want to play, they don't want to practice. I tell you, this is a great part-time job. They can do it while they're in college. They can go out on a weekend and earn a few hundred bucks. These flipping burgers at McDonald's, okay? As Patty Rolfe says, hey, for the juniors, it's all about the money. So get them involved, keep their love of the sport alive. Um, yeah, yeah, we have retirements for various reasons. Uh, <coughs> you know, get those uh, scorekeeper monitors, as I call them, we call them parents, uh, involved. Okay, and coaches, don't scare them away. All right, you get you know, young kid up there, 16, 17 years old. They have a different view on it, um, so work with them. I like to tell the story, it was my third tournament as a referee, and I'm up there and I got this very burly coach as my second referee. And I was wrong on a couple of things, and he approached me very calmly and said, you know, you might want to look at this. Thanks, Ted. <laughs> okay. So he didn't scare me away, he encouraged me. Burly. 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 <laughs> All right, um, we talked about the in-house referees, a number of clubs have taken advantage of it, a number of the uh, Division Three schools have taken advantage of it where they certify their college players as referees and they run their own tournaments and they supply their tournaments. These kids go through the same training as a, you know, a professional referee, as we call them, okay? So, we go through our mechanics, they go through the same training, okay? They have an interesting view on the game because they're all players. And Kim, I'll pick on you. How do your players, you know, is it beneficial to you as a, a coach to have them? <laughs> Yeah, 
So they gain they gain the perspective that hey, what we do is tough. Anybody been watching the Olympics? I heard there's a couple of tournaments going on there. How about that replay system? We don't see everything. Okay, we as much as we try those micro touches that move the finger a half an inch at 100 miles an hour, we do our best. Okay, I'm anxious to see Ryan's replay system. <laughs> Um, so work in progress on the curriculum. We'll have a, a chart very similar to this out there. If you're a, uh, you know, a coach, you'll have required modules. Anything else is optional. Remember this stuff is all out on USA Volleyball. It's all free. So if you want to go above and beyond, that's great. Questions? If you don't have them now and you think of them later, then Sharky said, send me an email or send Nancy an email and we will get an answer. Sometimes we don't have the answer. We don't make it up. We go out and re research it and we give you the best one we've got. And Jim does a column in the Beacon every other Thursday during the, se the regular season. So if there's a question that he gets from you guys, he usually will put it in because it might not just affect Wisconsin juniors, it probably affects everybody. So the more we as club directors can communicate with Jim, the better then we can communicate with other club directors, not in this room, and all 10,000 members who get the beacon every other Thursday. And I will change the names to protect the guilty, so don't worry about that. Okay. Anything else? All right.